Holy Grail. Transformium. That's what we're calling it. Focus grouped. Catchy. Trademarked. Yeah. This is the greatest advance in modern physics since the splitting of the atom. Programmable matter. Well, what if we take that same idea but think small? I mean, really small. I'm talking about programmable matter, actual three-dimensional tactile material that can take on any predetermined shape and then change shapes on demand. Imagine that we have a programmable material workstation. That might include a little trough with some beige putty in it. And this putty looks totally normal until you send it some information, like a virtual model of a three-dimensional object. And then it springs into action, forming that object right in front of your eyes. Now, it sounds like it's the stuff of science fiction. And that crazy kind of technology has to be 100 years away, right? Maybe. But maybe not. One approach to programmable matter is claytronics, which is an idea that came out of Carnegie Mellon University and Intel. The base unit of claytronics is the catom, the computerized atom. Now, these catoms can work together to form three-dimensional objects on demand. And building that kind of machine is pretty tricky. They have to be able to receive energy. They have to be able to communicate with one another. And they have to be able to move around, preferably without having any moving parts of their own. So several years ago, Carnegie Mellon researchers built catom cylindrical prototypes that were 44 millimeters in diameter. Now these things were able to move around on a two-dimensional plane, pushing and pulling against each other using electromagnets. In the future, we want to see even smaller catoms, maybe just a millimeter in size, or the size of a grain of sand, or maybe even smaller than that. Now, in a future where this is a reality, where we have programmable material, why should we be excited about it? Well, think about it. Email has pretty much rendered the facts obsolete. But what if you could fax three-dimensional objects? Let's say that I have a trough full of claytronic catoms in front of me, and I take an object and dip it into that trough. The catoms flow over it, creating a virtual model of the object I've put into it. And then I send that to you, and you have your own trough of claytronic catoms that assemble themselves into that same three-dimensional object. Boom! I just sent you a copy of a real physical thing. Or in the far future, it could be part of telepresence. Forget phone calls, forget video calls. I would be able to create a full three-dimensional claytronic version of myself that could appear in front of you and give you a handshake or even a hug. The entertainment applications for this alone are astounding. Imagine playing a video game and the characters literally leap off the screen and become three-dimensional creatures in your home. And if this stuff becomes plentiful and cheap enough, we could have objects disassembling and reassembling themselves everywhere. Let's say I've got a bunch of friends coming over for dinner and I wanna make sure I got enough seats for them. Well, I could use Claytronics to build the furniture right then and there. Then when my guests leave, I could have it disassemble back into those individual catoms and go into a vat for storage. One thing we have to take into consideration is this amazing future may never appear during our lifetimes, but I'm still really excited by the prospect of people working on this technology. And we don't even know where it could go. I mean, when people first started making computers, they had no way of knowing that the future would turn out to be as amazing as our present is. 